This is Kim. And this is Amanda. From Put a Cup in It. We are here to talk about some of the not often discussed aspects of using a menstrual cup. Maybe things that you might find out, possibly the hard way, after you begin using a menstrual cup. For starters, menstrual blood is pretty thick and it can be chunky. Before switching to a cup, you probably had an idea of what your blood looked like, or maybe you never even gave it a thought, but it actually kind of looks like chunky soup. Some people get clots, some people don't, but if you've never seen one before, it might be alarming. When it's in the cup and you pour it out for the first time, you'll probably be kind of impressed and interested to see that it's like a little lava lamp in your toilet. This is actually a good thing because if your blood were watery like water or a glass of wine, when you go to remove the cup and you pinch the base to break the seal, it could spill out over your hand and be kind of messy, which is what a lot of people assume. So having chunky blood from your vagina is a good thing. There's a learning curve, and while you may get the sucker in right the first time and nail it, chances are you won't, and backup is something to consider. It is not like a tampon where you just kind of poke it in and everything works out all right. When you put in a cup, there are different things to consider, like the fold method you use, because different folds work better for some cups than others, and also different positions. As you're putting it in, do you tilt it? Which angle, so like a cup like the Lily Cup has an angle and you want this towards your spine. These are all things that you're gonna have to figure out. Kim and I have different views about this. I'm sort of a jump in with both feet without thinking kind of girl and she's a little more cautious. But we both agree that the option of using backup protection is something to be aware of. Sometimes the internet has two moods, scare you to death or oversell, oversell, oversell. If you've researched cups, you've probably come across videos with a crazy, scary thumbnail of a woman who's like, <gasps> and a title that's like, my menstrual cup was stuck forever. These are clickbait videos. And this is not indicative of the kind of experience that the majority of people have with their cups. These are the experiences of people who want you to click and watch their videos so that they can make more money. The other side of the internet, the happy side, is like, oh my god, the menstrual cup changed my life. It's the most amazing thing I've ever heard of. It's the most amazing thing. Why didn't I do this sooner? And that's actually closer to the truth. But those people often don't tell you the little things like you have to get the cup to work. And often that means failing for a few tries before it gets there. So you're coming across those two things. You might be confused because it sounds like those things don't go together. So when you hear that cups can be life-changing, we agree, they definitely can change your life, but also be prepared that things may not go smoothly the first time, the second time, or, you know, for a little after. We recommend a few cycles to really get the hang of it. And don't be afraid to reach out for support, whether it's a friend that uses a cup, the comment section here, or our Facebook group. Whatever you do, don't listen to the worst case scenarios played out on YouTube. Your cervix moves. <laughs> yeah, it moves. And you kind of need to know where it is when you want to pick a cup. As your cervix moves throughout your cycle, if it's low during your period, only certain cups will fit. And conversely, if you have a very high cervix, you want a longer cup because you don't want to lose your cup. So these are two extreme scenarios that you definitely want to account for. And then there are those of you who are in the middle where something with an average length will work just fine. If you're watching this and you haven't made the switch yet, Make sure you watch our video on how to measure your cervix, but a quick little demo here is just insert a finger, probably while you're in the shower, while you're on your period, and see how low your cervix is. Measure that, and then compare the cups that are on the market that you're considering, and make sure it's shorter than your lowest cervix height. This is a fun one that no one tells you about. Your menstrual cup can make some interesting noises. Some of you might have researched using a cup, and you'll see people say you want to hear the cup and some people can actually hear that inside their bodies, not very many. But more likely you're gonna hear that squelching noise that the cup sometimes makes when being removed. Wet surface, wet cup, squishiness, lots of wet stuff. Thankfully these can be worn for up to 12 hours, but if you have to change it while you're out, or if you just don't like the possibility of the sound, instead of pulling the rim out all at once, try tilting it out. Tilting the cup out can also make the rim a bit thinner when you go to remove it, so if you happen to experience any discomfort when removing your cup, that may help. Here's something that you've probably heard or you haven't, that you can have sex with your cup in, maybe. 
Menstrual discs like the Ziggy from Intamina are one way that you can have sex on your period while still catching your menstrual blood. A disc sits very differently than a cup. A cup sits in the vaginal canal below the cervix to catch the flow, while a disc sits tucked up behind the pubic bone and behind the cervix, creating a seal that's sort of higher and back more. Menstrual cups, on the other hand, are definitely oral friendly, but did you know that some people actually have penetrative sex with a menstrual cup in? How? Well, for starters, the vaginal canal lengthens considerably when aroused. This makes plenty of room for a penis or a sex toy or whatever else goes in a vagina. Just to be very clear, menstrual cups are not designed to be worn while having penetrative sex, nor are they approved of in any official capacity that we've ever seen or unofficial capacity by any brand. Menstrual discs, on the other hand, are definitely approved of. Things to consider are the angle, the size of your partner, what you're trying to do, and the shape and contour of your cup. If you have the right cup and the mood strikes and you don't want to remove it for either mess purposes or things just happen very quickly, what will happen is that it can go beyond the cup like this. Oh my God, I'm doing it. Look at that. Or you can do a little just the tip action. So if the mood strikes and people are getting frisky and there's no time to remove your cup, do a little math, figure out what cup you have in, play some just the tip game and see where that takes you. And it might take you all the way or it might just stay just the tip. We've tried it. It works. Tried it a couple times. Worked every time. But again, think about the cup. Continually ask your partner if they're comfortable. Make sure you're comfortable. Or just use this or, you know, take it out. While I've personally only done it with a softer cup, I have heard that some people have done it successfully with a firmer cup. Basically, as long as your partner is careful and the cup plays nicely with your anatomy, it's been known to happen without injury or complaint. And knowing that because your vaginal canal does lengthen, it is going to raise that cup up a bit. So don't freak out if you go to try to adjust it afterward. It's probably gonna be riding high. You may not be able to reach it. Even me, I have a like medium to medium low-ish cervix and afterwards it's definitely like riding high. But that's okay, it will come back down after all of that stuff goes back to its pre-aroused positioning. All of this said, we definitely think Ziggy is the better solution and want what is often considered mess-free period sex. Pooping might be a problem. Okay, so we did a whole video about this, but it's worth mentioning again. For some people, having a bowel movement while wearing a cup is simply not comfortable. For some people, it's no big deal. If you're having a bowel movement and you feel like your cup's moving, you may want to preemptively just go ahead and take it out or hold it in place with a finger or something because you don't want to actually poop your cup out. That's a rarity, but it has happened. And if you're in public and a, it's a public, it's an automatic flushing toilet, that's a biggie because you might lose your cup. So keep that in mind. Pooping with a cup, think about it, make preparations. You may find that you want to collect and try them all. Oddly enough, <laughs> As strange as it might sound, one of the things that people don't expect when they switch to a cup is that it may turn into their new weird hobby, and they're going to tell everyone about it. Making the switch to a cup can take a lot of courage. We aren't taught about cups in school, and most of us may not know someone in real life who uses a cup that we can ask all of those TMI questions to. That brings me to my next point, the internet. Once you've discovered cups, you're going to discover that there are hundreds of cups. They come in all sorts of colors, silky soft silicones, and innovative shapes, and you may want to try them all. Even if your first cup is perfect for you, you may find yourself drawn to other cups simply because they're pretty or the shape looks like it might be really comfortable or it just has really good reviews. If this is you, welcome to what we lovingly refer to as the cup cult. One of us, one of us. You're gonna fit right in. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe. Bye. I can't believe I'm fingering a vagina on video. Look at that. Number two. Number two. Number two. Yay. Sometimes it can make a... You're gonna find a one a cup. You're gonna find a one a cup. That's not even a word.